that ancient village, oh, there was a village recently that got destroyed by the police mm -hmm. Is the road to Shimshal in good, in good shape? Good, yeah, yeah. It's good, yeah. 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 Until uh, Pasu, then they have a no metal road in the concrete. Until Pasu, yeah. <coughs> and so we walk all the way? No, no until we, go, we to go to Shimshal by car. Okay. Village, yeah. And no, then we have to walk by right. track and start it. It was a blast, sudden blast. And then a chunk of, uh, a big chunk of mountain flew in air and collided uh, with the mountain uh, next, uh, I mean, uh, in front of that. And then it was rebounded back to the community. And they had less chances to get out of that. There was a, a mountain of mud which was uh, coming onto the houses. And that's why, because of the mud, it was, if it was water, they would have. But mud, you know, it's not easy to come out of the mud. So that's why they lost their lives. And then when we visit next, visited next day, my court, there was no signs of life over there. So we just entered the Shimshal Valley. We're trying to get to our field area up Shimshal River. But the road seems to be blocked and we're not quite sure why, but our drivers decided to reverse down the road. So we're currently going backwards into the Shimshal Valley. And one of the most dangerous roads in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we think that the driver might just want a challenge. So he decided to go backwards. We're just not crazy enough, you know, we just have to <laughs> drive backwards. Next, the blindfold. <laughs> Tell me what's, what's just happened. Uh, we are have a stock here in the road, middle of the way to Shamshal. Uh, the road is broken due to the water flow, river is up. And we are waiting for car to shift our baggage and the gear to Shamshal. But there are no car. from uh, Pasu, so on the upper Hunza, and we drove to a very deep and very fascinating gorge, very dangerous actually, the road was just cut into the stone, so we're here at Malanguti a Glacier in the middle of Shimshal Valley, in fact Malanguti means the middle glacier, and as you can see the Malanguti Glacier is very close to the valley flank, in fact there are only a few decameters separating the snout of the glacier to the valley flank, right? Now, the river of Shimshal is flowing just right in front of the Malanguti Glacier. But some scientists that have been here in the past, like Itrizaga, have suggested that there is subglacial drainage. So water flowing underneath the glacier. And there may be some pockets of water, some hidden lakes that are very dangerous um, because they may pr um, prove a risk of catastrophic flooding. Um, our guide has pointed out that this glacier was much uh, bigger in the past, probably during the, uh, the Little Ice Age 200 years ago. We can see uh, a, a lateral a moraine just behind us that is about 200 meters, maybe 150 meters higher. So this glacier is very big, possibly about 45 kilometers long. Um, it's indeed a very fascinating glacier and we'll be investigating this location in much uh, more detail in the next couple of weeks. Six or seven years ago, yeah, and they have sent me their report of glacier. Yes, cool. It's Urizaga. Yes, yes. Yeah, we've read her paper. Yeah, yeah. it's very good. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to follow up with Urizaga. Yeah. So we use her paper and we see what's changed. Right. Yeah. Be good. So Urizaga is a female scientist who visited here in 2005. Um, and she observed the glaciers that were surrounded by now. And what she picked up on was that Yuxin Gardan, which is over here, was the trigger mechanism which blocked Bidjarab Lake Basin, which is behind us over here. Um, 
and she reckoned that every 20 years or so, the Yuxin Gardan made the necessary movements to block the Jirab Lake Basin, which created a larger lake there, which then made a huge flood risk. And that's essentially what we're here to investigate. <laughs> It's amazing how debris covered the glacier is. It's unclear where it's come from. I guess it must come from higher up. Even in the middle it's covered in black debris. Here you can see it goes straight down onto the glacier and you can see how it gets debris covered here but in the middle I don't know how. I think this is an amazing spot for the GPS uh, a base station. Uh, we have good visibility up the glacier and also good visibility down the glacier. Um, our range is about 10 kilometers, so I think this is just about 10 kilometers. Um, so I think with this sta uh, base station here at the Moraine, just next to the base camp, we could uh, monitor Yuxin Gardan Glacier and the snout of Kurdopin Glacier. And this is a day in the field, in the Karakoro Mountains. We're tagging boulders such as this one and measuring its location with the GPS behind me. Um, so we're going okay. Best part of the day, guys? So this is the second best part of the day. Yeah, what's the best? Dinner. <laughs> Breakfast Absolutely. is also pretty good though. Yeah. Where does, but dinner you get to go to sleep after. That's true. We're just drilling in the whole, um, what's the dice? I rate drilling, not that high. I do quite like a good drilling. So like third, <laughs> so like third thing? Uh, I don't know. We get to do other things other than drilling. I think this is my favorite bit of the lunch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Happy cow! The aims of geomorphic mapping is to show the morphology and distribution of glacigenic uh, landforms and any information about their genesis and I guess in respect to our project showing if there is any risk of a catastrophic flood. Trying to find the spot where that photograph was taken, 1909. But it looks looks as though the glacier has actually grown in this region. Um, we're trying to find the perspective to, to make the, the mountain in the distance tally up with the photo here. But you'd have to have been about 200 200 meters further that way, right? Um, yeah. So it looks it's going to be tricky tying up this photo. Well, this is what we've been reduced to. We can hang in our trousers and cleaning our teeth in our tents. Oh. The end of civilization as we know it. I think the monsoon's here. I think it's reasonable. That is not easy. This is a real, uh, very technical peak, and also the glacier is longer and a lot of caves. It's not easy you can easily cross to the glacier. We have woken up in ABC. We have finally arrived after yet another grueling day descending Yuxin Garden Sar. It took us four days to get down from Camp 3 at 6,400 meters and three of which we've done without either gas to melt water or food. So it was very, very hard and we look um, very tired and we are very tired, but we are happy to be back and uh, be safe and sound.
So what we found is at the moment, at Kurdopin and um, Yuxing Gardan, you guys know there's no lake, there's no risk of flooding at the moment, and the glacier is 20 meters from the wall. So at the moment, there's no risk of glacial lakes. We found from our GPS survey that the glacier is moving 2.5 centimeters a day. That's about 12, centi 12 meters a year. So the glacier is moving slowly. So it's in a period where the glacier is not doing much. Uh, we spent 45 days overall on base camp, of which 20, 20 to 24 days was GPS survey. Um, then we also carried out geomorphic mapping, especially of the contact area between the valley flank and the glacier. The Shibshad people aren't being preoccupied by the golf problem in the region, and they would appreciate more intervention into their valley, more monitoring uh, from the government and so on. So, for example, in Paso, the uh, the meteorological department installed uh, a weather station which is visited. I've, well, we've been in touch with Dr. Rasul before coming here and we were meant to see him today, although I'm not sure if this will happen. But uh, similar intervention in Shimsha would be much appreciated by the people. So a glove is actually a stands for glacial lake outburst flood. So due to climate change and rising temperatures and things like that, the glaciers in Pakistan, especially in the northern areas of Pakistan where the, these glaciers exist, uh, they are also uh, melting at a faster, than, a faster rate than before. Actually, GLOF is one of the challenge or you can say side effect created by the climate change. So uh, during these uh, recent years, the um, Pakistan's northern areas are uh, facing uh, frequent uh, kind of uh, events of uh, GLOFs. Pakistan has been ranked uh, uh, at the third country out of 10 top uh, countries affected by the climate change during the, uh, the current decade. So Pakistan has, uh, is the biggest, uh, you know, has the biggest uh, uh, deposits of glaciers outside the uh, polar region and it is also known as the third polar region glaciers. So uh, due to this climate change, because um, a huge population in Pakistan, in the glacier region, they are living around the uh, glaciers. Uh, so in case of uh, pressure of climate change, uh, so the people, uh, if the glow events occur, or glacier bursts, or flash floods occur, the people uh, living uh, around the um, streams and around the glaciers, they uh, suffer uh, very lot from these uh, gloves.